Hi there. We're really lucky to have a group of actors reading these Crosstalk DC scenes that have been a catalyst for meaningful dialogue in classrooms and communities across the city. We have four scenes for you. Two from The Merchant of Venice by William Shakespeare, probably written in 1596. And two scenes from District Merchants, a play set in Washington, D.C. in 1870 written by Aaron Posner in 2016. Our actors are Shylock, Michael Toledo, Antoine, James J. Johnson, Nessa, Fatima Quander, and Portia, Sarah Barker. The year is... More or less. 1870. The place, more or less, Washington in the District of Columbia. Formerly a swamp, now the capital city. A burgeoning metropolis in this puerile, barely adolescent country. The population, about 130,000. Two thirds white, one third recently freed slaves, and other uh, Negro peoples. Mostly free blacks, even before the war. Yes, mostly. About 1,500 Jews. If you count the reform. I count a Yid as a Yid. And I count a Schwarz as a Schwarz. We won the war. Which also means we lost the war. No, we won. And lost. That's the horror of civil wars. If you win, you lose. And it never ends. Read history. Read Herodotus. Read the Bible. The war is over. The enigmatic, alcoholic war here in General Ulysses S. Grant is now president of these newly reunited states. Not a friend of the general. He's not a friend of the Jews. The 13th, 14th, and 15th amendments to the Constitution have been passed in the last five years. The slaves are free. Black men can vote. After the destruction of the Civil War, Reconstruction has begun. Yes, very nice. Now it's all latkes and kugel with raisins from here forward. Hmm? To sum up, it's 1870. Fictional 1870. Theatrical 1870. It's Washington, D.C. Power and politics, credit and coercion. Money and mashigas. Mashigas is uh, Yiddish for craziness, insane nonsense. The word is a joking shrug of a word. A Jew might just say, look, such mashigas instead of, oh, you such awful cruelty by small-minded people who fear that they do not understand and for whom the Jews are an easy target for hatred and ridicule. Yeah, we got a word for that, too. I shouldn't wonder. Enough. Time to begin. You've been, or so I hear, less than helpful to those whom I have sent your way of late. I do not understand you. I offer fair terms. They find them unacceptable. The terms are fair. Of course the terms are fair. You want I should charge less? Well then, my friend, lower your commission rate and I will. A commission that I then reinvest. You do not know what these men have suffered. Their suffering is not collateral. I'm not their mommy. I lend money. Do you know what percentage will default? I should assume all the risk for no gain. <laughs> I'd be out of business in a year. Reconstruction is a new beginning. It is the brand new start this country has, so badly needed for a hundred years. A chance for all of us to start again. A shame then, isn't it, that it will fail? It will, if such as we will let it fail. Your people are not ready. You're killing the ring and the kiss of a tea party. What does that mean? You cannot bring a pig to a tea party. Then help them to begin. You shall open your hand to them and lend them sufficient to their need. Deuteronomy, lend where it is needed most and charge fair interest. <laughs> I'm not thrown away what I have earned. Because you think my people unworthy. Because I have eyes and ears and judgment. If Reconstruction fails, then country fails. We have this one brief chance to get this right. Then get it right. If you're a shepherd, look to your sheep. Do not just blame the Jew. Remember, I know you of old, my friend, and we both know wolves come in all sizes, shapes, and colors. I'm not the only wealthy man standing on this street corner.
the businessman. The suit? Mr. Walker, is he you mean? Is. As fair a man as e'er I've seen. Fair? Indeed, as in, in fair condition. Not poor, nor good, nor surely not pristine. Well, not spindled, destroyed, or mutilated. He can stand, walk, talk, and tell a tawdry tale about a bear or a cock. <laughs> or stand and gawk at me like so many of my would-be grooms. He's fair and fine, and surely not for me. So how about the lanky schoolboy? Young Rittenhouse. Huh. He's a proper lad. Oh, you like him then? You misapprehend. He is proper, stuffy, a stuff full of virtues, perhaps, but who can tell? If a man has a fine rod, I don't want it up his ass. Well, okay then. Then how about the moor? Like Othello himself here in the flesh, and actual African royalty, or so they say. He cuts quite a figure. Well, and he thinks so, too. What he may think of me, I have no idea. I don't think he sees me. So enamored he is of himself. <laughs> Plus, I don't know. He's just so, well, black. Ouch. Oh, it's nothing personal, Nessa. You know how I feel about your people. Do I? I'm on your side. Freedom and all. All men are created equal. The vote. But still, it's just not quite what I'd imagined. For myself, I mean. You understand, right? Do you think it's possible to love and hate someone so much at the exact same time? Do you? Seriously, do you? But here's the thing, though. I don't know if it's kind of like hating a blind person for not being able to see, which seems unreasonable and unkind, or more like being frustrated by a really lazy person for not making the damn effort to get off their lazy asses and do something. She was born with blinders on. I get it. And, and... Everyone tells her every day she has perfect vision, so maybe it's not her fault. But she's as smart as a tack about so many things, it's hard not to take it personal. What does she actually see when she looks at me? Can you imagine? Does she think, oh, that Nessa... It must be hard being her, but, but, you know, I'm really quite good to her, and I give her all my old clothes and things, and she's doing better than many of her people, so that's okay, right? I have all this, and she has none of that, and I did nothing to deserve all the things I have, and she did nothing to not deserve all the things she doesn't have, but that's just, that's just, what? That, that's what I want to know. That's just what? How does she finish that sentence in her mind? Or does that sentence never form in her mind? Is that even possible? I think I do. Nessa, you know. I do. I know. I believe I understand you, Portia. Perfectly, ma'am. And I, you too, Nessa.